before we start, I'd like to give a who shout out to all my Patreon members. All credit goes out to them as it's their support that is helping me create these videos. Also, don't forget to like, subscribe and comment to FM Scout's YouTube page. Peace and enjoy the video. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to FM Scout's YouTube channel. It is RDF and today we have a tactical recreation. Yes, today we are going to try and recreate the 3 4 one, two that Gasparini uses at Atalanta. It is a very, very exciting tactic. Gasparini uses this formation in such ways that I think it's just pure genius and no wonder why his team is doing very, very well with Atalanta. Him and his team are doing absolutely fantastic this season and we're going to try and recreate his system and pick out the reasons why his team have been doing so well. So what I have here on the screen is the tactical shape, is my recreation of his tactics. I will be picking up some key areas and to why I choose some of these roles, some of these instructions and what am I actually aiming for, what are the most important elements that I am trying to take away from his actual gameplay. Because as we know, it's fairly impossible to literally to have a 100% recreation of a real life tactic into Football Manager. But what we can do is try and pick up some key elements and, and we can get some key patterns of play from real life into the game. Well, hopefully we can do that. It's not guaranteed. One thing I notice about Gasparini is his diamonds. He usually has diamonds on either side of the pitch and he uses his defenders as the anchor man for these diamonds. When we have possession of the ball, I am asking him to play out wider and to dribble more with the ball, hoping that we can form a diamond between the ball playing defender, the left mid, the centre mid and the deep line forward who will be dropping around these areas and as you can see here the diamond will be formed by creating two diamonds on the pitch so we have one on the left hand side and one on the right hand side this gives the attacking playmaker or the attacking midfielder the absolute license to roam around pit pockets into space so he can be effective Gasparini also loves his team to be roaming around, to be rotating. He likes his players to be roaming around different positions, different areas on the pitch. And mainly these changes, these positional changes and interchanges will be happening out wide. So from my team instructions, you can see that for both flanks, I am focusing the play down there because the main focus is to get the ball out wide in these areas so we can form so we can form diamonds, but not just diamonds, we want overloads on the flanks, making it impossible for the opposition to deal with. And also we want their defenders to be dragged out of position. For example, if the defender is marking the deep line forward and he drifts out into wide areas and we're hoping that the defender will follow him and this should now leave a gap for another player an example the attacking midfielder to run into but it's not just out wide that is key it is also the front three at the top of the pitch they will need to have great communication with each other they need to have a great relationship as you can see the team fluidity is actually unstructured we wanted to focus mainly on a fluid system but with the player roles that we chosen and the duties we couldn't achieve that but it is not impossible to achieve throughout the whole season. I didn't just have this tactic loaded. I did make some changes. So if I noticed that my front three, I wanted more interchanging, more movement from my front three, I would just simply change the player duties of my strikers into the support. And as you can see, the team fluidity has now changed to flexible. But in game, you will notice that the front three will now make even more changes, even more movement. But you have to be careful when you choose to do this because I started like this and what I noticed is that not at all times the strikers made the right decision when to move. I noticed that when I played attacking, the interchanging was a little bit more restricted. But when it did happen, it often happened at the right times rather than at all the time. One thing I see when watching Atalanta 2, they don't actually give away possession very, very cheaply. They are actually very, very good on the ball and they're okay at keeping possession of the ball. And one reason I see why this happens is because the 
players roaming around the pitch always in space to receive a ball which means then Atalanta will hardly have to play the more direct ball because of the lack of options and me trying to achieve this I've opened the attacking width out wider and I've also gone for the shorter passing but alongside those instructions you can see in my central midfielders I am actually using two Mazalas which can be very very offensive but the aim is for us to have the ball most of the times to try and limit the amount of times we actually have to defend. They will be moving around, roaming from the position, moving into channels, staying wider. By doing this, I'm hoping that they will always be in spaces for them to collect the ball and that way we can hold possession a lot more better, especially in the midfield, building our attacks. In transition, we've gone with the counter press and the counter when the ball has been won because this is how I feel Gasparini plays. You will notice when watching Atalanta, when the opposition has the ball, Atalanta gives the team little time on the ball because they are usually up in their face, especially in the central midfield. If the opponents have the ball in central midfield, you will notice that the Atalanta midfielders don't give the team any chance or any time on the ball to be making key passes. So for, so for your central midfielders, you would need to make sure that you have very, very high work rate. And when out of possession, they defend with a high line, but they also defend with a high line of engagement. Again, it's to minimise the space that the opponent has to play in, in order for us to get the ball back quicker and we can be on the ball having possession. And now that I feel that we've focused on the key areas of Gasparini's play, now we can have a quick run through the team instructions and the player instructions. Of course we spoke a little about the instructions already, but with the attacking width we've gone out wide to try and stretch the play more. We want to focus down the flanks, but also we want space for our players to move into. For the approach play, we are going to focus down the flanks in order to try and keep the ball out in wide areas so we can create the overloads in those areas. But I did notice when playing against bigger oppositions, this didn't always work to great effect. So when I played teams like Juventus and Inter, especially away from home, I did remove these two instructions. The ball did still go out wide to play in, but it wasn't as intense when the instruction was on. We will also be aiming to play out of the fence and by doing that we are going to be asking our two central midfielders to come deep to collect the ball to make it much easier for us to play out of the fence. For passing directness I've gone with shorter. With tempo I feel that it could have been either way. It could have been a slowish tempo or it could have been a quicker tempo. In some moments it's very very patient build up waiting for the perfect time but then at some times during the 90 minutes you will notice that they play with a quick and high tempo. But for the Gasparini template here, I have gone for the higher tempo. For the final third approach play and this area here, we've left it completely empty. So now it will be more on the player's decision making. In transition, we've gone with the counter press to try and win the ball back as soon as possible. And when possession has been won, we will be countering getting our players into the more advanced areas. I noticed that Antalanta have a lot of forward runners when their possession has been won. For the goalkeeper distribution, which is going to distribute it to our centre-backs, mainly because we don't have the options out wide as we are using no full-backs or wing-backs. Out of possession, we've gone with the higher line of engagement alongside the higher defence line. And I noticed that a much higher defence line worked better when the opponent was playing an attacking midfielder. For me, this closes the gap and space for the opponent's attacking midfielder to play in. For the present intensity, we have gone with the more urgent and we will be trying to prevent the goalkeeper's distribution. Now for the player roles, for the two wider centre backs, we've gone for the ball playing defender on the defend duty, alongside the dribble more instruction and stay wider when we are in possession of the ball. For the centre back, he is going to be on the cover, trying to cover the two centre backs in case needed and he will have no instructions on his player instructions. For the two wide players, we've gone for the wide midfielder, they will be passing it shorter, crossing it from the byline when they do have the option to do so and stay wider. They will need to be out wide maintaining their width throughout the game. For the two central midfielders, we have gone for the Mazala 
as I explained earlier, the aim here is to get them out in wider areas so they can create the overload and the diamond shape when we are in possession of the ball and when we are trying to build attacks. They will be very, very hard workers. I have instructed them to mark tight. So when the opposition has the ball in the midfield, our midfielders will be marking tight in hope to minimise the space and time the opponent has on the ball in the central midfield. For the advanced playmaker role, the attacking midfielder, the Alejandro Gomez. He will be dribbling more as I feel this is what Gomez does when he is on the ball. I also feel he's great at holding up the ball but on Football Manager you cannot have the two options. It's either one or the other and considering Gomez has very very high dribbling stats I have gone with the dribble more. I've also asked him to roam around from his position in order to try and collect the ball and I've also asked him to mark tighter to give the opponents deep players minimum time to play from the back. For the two strikers you can either have them on support duty or the attack duty. For me I got more from them when it was on the attack duty. I felt that the system worked a lot more better. It gave me more attacking options but it's something that you can choose to change. At the start I played with both strikers on support and then around 10 games or so I changed it to attacking because I felt that gave me better results but I've also given them the roam from position and mark tire instructions for the exact same reasons as the attacking midfielder. When playing the bigger teams like Juve or Inter I did remove the focus down the left and the right. I also switched the defence line to much higher when I came up against opponents that played an attacking midfielder. And for the two strikers, you can either have them on an attack duty or the support duty. With the support duty, they will be a lot more involved in the game and a lot more rotational play. On the attack duty, you will get a lot more attacking threat from the two strikers. But now we have covered the tactic, let's go into some stats. We'll start off with the league result and as you can see we won the league, we won 29 matches so the exact same amount as Juventus but we drew one more than Juventus and losing one less than Juventus. We only scored 80 goals which is a huge disappointment because in real life I think Atalanta scored 98 goals, that is almost 20 more than us. But one thing that we did better Atalanta in real life was the goals conceded. I think in real life they conceded around 46 and we only conceded 29. So this tactic is actually more solid defensively but attacking wise is a little less potent. But when we look into the detailed stats as you can see Atalanta topped the average possession with 61%. Very very pleasing for me. There was actually a few games where we was getting 70% possession which is a very very high number. But as you can see we scored the second most goals in the league so not a huge disappointment but I feel attacking sense it could be a little bit more better so who knows. One of you guys out there might have a tweak that actually makes this tactic score a lot more goals. We completed the most crosses, that is something I felt I didn't take advantage of. I felt that with so many crosses we should have scored a lot more from them. I did try different areas of crossings but again hopefully that's something that one of you guys can crack. Goals from corners, we scored 6, we scored the most from direct free kicks. But passes completed, we completed 19,643 passes which is the most in the league and we created 97 chances. Again, I think in real life Antalanta created a lot more chances but 97 is still a very high number on Football Manager. Dribble per game was actually 17th with only 13 dribbles per game on average. Conversion rate were only 7th with 9%. So some of these stats I feel could be a lot better. And when we look at some team stats, Duvan Zapata scored 22 goals in 46 games. Illich scored 13 goals in 33 games. With Gomez only scoring one. Very, very disappointing. But he did get injured a lot. I don't know if I can blame his injuries, but the injuries were fairly, fairly annoying. He only managed to play 27 games this season. For the assist, Gosens has got the most assists, so you can see that he was a very, very key player in the system. Zapata with 11 assists, so he was also key. And Illich, the top two strikers and the two wide players were very, very key to the system. Looking at our competitions and how we done, in the Champions League we didn't do so great. We finished third in the group stages and then we went into the Europa League and then we got knocked out by Atletico Madrid in the second round. In the Italian Cup we was expected to reach the quarterfinals, 
very, very disappointing to only reach the first round getting knocked out by Sampdoria. For the European games and the cup games, I play a B team. For the cup games, I just wanted to minimise the risk of players getting injured and tiredness. Tiredness is a very, very big thing on this game. And playing three games in a week is a bit much for players, especially when you've got a tactic that has a high intensity. So very, very disappointing in the cup games. I'm sorry that we couldn't do any better. But in the Italian league, you can see that Atalanta won the league only by one point. And when you look at some results, it started bad as we got a 2-1 defeat to Juve. But then we beat Sassuolo 3-1. Then we beat Fiorentina 3-0. And we went in a very good one. But then losing 2-1 away to Brescia. We drew 2-2 against Napoli, which for me was two points dropped. We played very, very well in that game. We got a 0-0 draw away to Lazio, which Lazio are very, very strong in this game. And I'm going to show you a very, very bad result. At home, towards the end of the season, we lost 5-2 to Lazio. How it happened, I actually do not know. We just got completely dominated in that game. Lazio ran absolutely wild and we just got hammered. No excuses. And that left us on the very, very last game of the season to try and win the league. And thankfully, we did against AC Milan at the San Siro. But you can have a quick look at some of these results. There's a big one here. 2-0 at home to Juve. Also a 1-0 victory at home to Milan. We have a 2-1 home victory here to Roma. We managed to get a 1-1 draw away to Inter. But we did lose 1-0 away to Napoli. But that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and comment. Please don't forget to stay safe out there. It is a very, very dangerous world at the moment. So please make it a little bit better by staying safe. I hope to see you soon on the YouTube channel again, guys. Peace and enjoy the rest of your day.